Okay, thank you everyone for coming. This is uh, PHP 7, the new, new PHP. Uh, but first, this word from our sponsor. Aquia is the digital experience, man, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so I've known Larry for about 10 years now or something like that, a really long time. Coming up on 11. Yeah, coming up on 11. Uh, we first met at DrupalCon Sunnyvale, and it was interesting because back then, like, Drupal.org didn't have funny, you know, user pictures or any of that. We were all just blue nicknames. And um, so I had in my mind a picture of Larry based on his online interactions. It's like this burly, muscle-bound guy with, like, long, greasy hair who, like, I don't know. And then I met him, and he's, like, this scrawny nerd with, like, orange hair. So I thought that was pretty cool. So he's been defying expectations ever since. But um, what I really like about Larry is uh, he really goes after, like, huge amazingly insurmountable problems. You know, everything from trying to make every hosting company migrate to PHP 5 back in the day, to, uh, you know, making Drupal's database abstraction layer, you know, something other than raw SQL write it and written everywhere, and on, all the way up to, you know, bringing Drupal off of the Drupal island and incorporating best practices from libraries everywhere else. And Larry's kind of taken each of these things by the horns and wrestled them on the ground and, and really brought the project forward. So I really wanted to say thanks for that. So what you're saying is I uh, I'm a fool who tackles things without realizing just how big they are. Pretty much, yeah. But I'm one of those two, so we, yeah, fist bump, no. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's right. What else did I want to say about you? Oh, uh, you recently started a job with uh, Platform where you are the, uh, I'm going to have to look at this, Director of Runtimes, Integrations, and Services. Does that intentionally an acronym that spells DREES? It, it was very close when we were coming up with it and decided to just put it the rest of the way. Right on. Okay, yes, I thought that was right. So uh, you're working for platform.sh these days. Um, we can blame you for Drupal 8 being too classy uh, with the object orientation things. And uh, you're also on the PHP Framework Interability Group, where you uh, are the editor of the Huggable interface. Ah. All right. So with is PSR 8 compatible? <laughs> All right, cool. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Larry Garfield uh, to talk about the future of PHP. So. And things down now. There, here we go. And for those of you who don't know her, that's Angie Webchick Byron uh, with our product owners, Drupal 7 release maintainer, and a gazillion other pieces of awesome that I'm not going to mention now because I could fill my entire session with that. So <clears throat> now that that's over, all right, oh, we talked about me. Let's talk about PHP 7. That's why we're here, right? PHP 7 is you know, new, it was released last fall. Uh, it's cool, it's wonderful. Uh, what happened to PHP 6? Yes, yeah, uh, see, uh, PHP 6 actually eloped with Perl 6. They moved to Vegas. Um, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. There actually was a PHP 6 at one point uh, in development, and its big feature was going to be Unicode everything, and they never actually got that to work, so the internals team ripped out the Unicode part and released the rest of what was PHP 6 as PHP 5.3. So we've been living in the PHP 6 era for the last five years. Uh, now we're up to the PHP 7 era. <clears throat> so what's cool about PHP 7? Well, it's got a larger number on the end. <laughs> Besides that, there's a lot new in PHP 7. Um, something like 30 or 40 uh, RFCs that passed for it <clears throat> uh, with new feature improvements, underlying uh, improvements under the hood. I'm going to talk today about what I consider the 10 most important improvements for developers, for people actually writing PHP code. Um, and so I am super excited about PHP 7. It's one of the most important releases of PHP in a decade. I'd say it's the biggest change since PHP 5, 5.0. Uh, uh, and my goal today is for you to leave here saying, oh my god, PHP 7, yes! So let's see if we can pull that off. <clears throat> Number one. Let me ask you this question. Do you trust your doc blocks? Who here trusts their doc blocks? Wow, it's even fewer than I expected, i.e. one. We got one person. OK. <laughs> so let, let's have a look at this code. So, you know, this is some nice uh, example code here. We have this method called get address. Can you tell what get address returns? I have no idea. And whatever it's returning, it's going to get passed to um, this distance between function. Um, is that 
do we know that it's even right? Is that expecting the same thing? Or is it going to even work, or is it going to fatal as soon as I... object. Or at least I'm going to claim that it's an address object. I'm going to suggest that it might be an address object. Is that talkbox accurate? I give it better than 50% odds, but no more than that. And of course, who knows, maybe the function's going to return null in some cases. And then I try to use that address object and get null and, oh, look, my code blows up. That's lovely. We need some way that we can definitively guarantee what we're going to get back from that method. <clears throat> and hey, look, we want to put this in the syntax so that the code will check it for us. And now we can. As of PHP 7, we have return types. You specify colon address. This is going to return an address, period, always. Return types, the number one new feature in uh, PHP 7. I shouldn't say it that way. The first feature, major new feature, <laughs> in PHP 7. Uh, every method, every function can now optionally specify a single return type. Syntax is colon and then whatever. Just like you, know, you can type in uh, parameters. They are not nullable. Nullable means it's thing or null. These are not nullable, which means if you type in that that method returns an address object and you try to return anything that is not an address object, PHP will complain at you, including null. If you get back a value from calling that method, you know, guaranteed, you have an address object, otherwise the code would have already exploded on you. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's look at this uh, code. We've probably all written code like this at some point. Load something out of a, a repository, get some object off it, get another object off it. What happens if you may have a null object when you run this. Method called a non-object. Lovely. Who has seen this at some point in their code and gone, dag damn it? Pretty much everybody. Yep. How do you fix this? Well, in PHP 5, you add a whole bunch of if statements around your code. Correct. Yeah. It, no, let's not do that. If it's typed, <coughs> then um, you, know, you know you're going to get back an address. If you try to return a null, then PHP's runtime itself will object. And you don't have to handle it. The code, you know, the engine is already going to handle that for you. But if you can't return null on error conditions, then what do you do? Well, you could throw an exception, or you could also return an empty value object of some kind. Which of these you, you want to do depends on your use case but all this is making for more robust uh, debuggable code. If you have a repository of some kind, I would recommend throwing an exception. If you know, you're asking for a user by ID, but there is no such user, the odds of the rest of the code coming after that working are pretty slim. So just bail out, exception, you know, handle it like any other uh, exception. <clears throat> because that's really, yeah, that is an invalid argument. If you have a value object of some kind, I would recommend creating a null object. Lots of variable types have a natural empty equivalent. Under, uh, for a string, the empty version is an empty string. For an array, the empty version is an empty array. And those are all type safe, which means if I for each over an empty array, when I expect a full array, it'll still work just fine. Nothing's going to break. Similarly, if I have this address interface and I create this empty address, that matches that interface, then if I have no address, I can return this empty address and it's still type safe. What do these methods do? Depends on my use case. That's up to me to decide. This is your call as a developer, which one is going to make more sense in your code base? That's fine. This now helps you with error handling. It helps you have to uh, spend less time handling weird edge cases because your type system is going to handle that for you. <coughs> Returning null uh, when you're expecting a real value is usually very rude. PHP itself will sometimes return meaningful value or false on error. That is flipping your developers the bird. Don't ever do that. Because that's saying you could get back a real object or a Boolean, 
Which one? You have to check yourself every time, and nothing you do is going to be type safe. I can't even give you back an empty array. No, don't do that. It undermines your type expectations. It forces your users to throw if statements around everywhere. Just don't do that. But use return types. They're cool. What else we got? So let's have a look at this code again. <clears throat> this is a, you know, similar to the uh, last example we looked at. And we've got this distance between uh, function that takes two addresses and computes the, the distance between them. OK. But you know, th then what is that supposed to be? Is that an integer? Are we going to round off to the nearest mile or kilometer? Are we going to turn it to the nearest you know, three decimal points? What is that? And then it computes shipping. Are we rounding off to the nearest dollar, maybe? I don't know. What does distance between return? It's probably not going to be an object. So what do we do instead? Oh, we just tell it what kind of primitive it's going to be. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> We're going to assume it's whole miles. Round up. It's uh, an integer. We can now type hint on integers and floats and other scalars. In other words, if you ever see Andrea Fold or Anthony Ferrara at a conference, you owe them a drink because they're the ones who made this happen. PHP 7 now supports scalar typing. All optional, all opt in. I still suggest using it. We added float, int, string, and bool. Now, no, it's int, not integer, bool, not boolean. <clears throat> uh, there are no aliases for that. But that means the full list of types you can now type hint in any parameter to any function or method and return from any function or method. You can type on an int, a float, string, bool, array, callable, which means thing that you can put parentheses after and PHP will execute code, uh, or any class name, internal or external. This means you can type pretty much your entire code base, or like 98% of your code base, and build the logic into your code to control the shape of your data. <clears throat> Why is this important? Well, let's look at this uh, address interface we saw before. What does get street return? Is it a string with a, uh, a street number and a uh, street name, then maybe an, at, uh, an apartment number? Is it an object that has those uh, separate properties? Which one makes more sense? Either one is legit. Both of those are completely valid ways to build a system, depending on your use case. But I can't tell which it is. Now I can. I know that get street is supposed to return a string. Cool. Now I can build my logic on that assumption safely. <clears throat> and I can type into my constructor for it safely. And if I get past something that's not a string, it gets handled. Of course, PHP's typing has traditionally been very weak. And I don't mean that as an insult. It's called weak typing. So you know, let's create a new address, like a couple of new addresses. Um, what's the problem on this slide? Who, who can point out the, the bug here? Zip code should be a string, yes. Because US zip codes are not five digit numbers. They're a five character numeric string. Because in certain parts of the country, especially the Northeast, uh, such as Massachusetts, the zip codes begin with a zero. What happens when you have a string literal but that begins with uh, a uh, integer literal that begins with a zero in PHP? Octal. It's rendered in base eight. So with this code, what happens? You pass the value 1099 as the zip code to that address, which is probably not a valid zip code, not even in Boston. And that gets into your database. And a month later, you read it out and try to compute something off of it. And your code breaks because you have this weird 1099 value as your zip code. Where did that come from? It came from here because you had a, a, a bug because you weren't tra tracking type. But that's what PHP does, because an integer can be converted into a string transparently. This was the biggest dispute in PHP 7 in terms of uh, scalar typing. It's really what kept uh, scalar typing out of the language for so long, is what do we do with this use case? Do we be extra pedantic or not? The end conclusion was both, because PHP. It's actually a pretty elegant uh, approach once you get used to it. By default, PHP is in weak mode. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, in this case, variables cast, excuse me, scalars will cast like we're used to. You pass an integer to something that wants a string, it knows what to do with it, it'll accept it. You pass an integer to a float, it knows what to do with it. You pass an empty string to something want, that wants a boolean, it'll figure out you probably meant false. And you know, the only thing that um, does not work uh, naturally like that is if you pass a string to something that expects an integer, normally PHP will just truncate that. With uh, scalar types, it will truncate that and throw an E notice. So, because that's pretty much always gonna be a data loss problem. So this is well and good for backward compatibility, but does undermine type safety. So, stick this line at the top of your file, declare strict types, and now it's in strict pedantic mode. And now, if you pass something to uh, this constructor that is not a string, not actually a string, not an integer that looks like a string, but actually a string, you will get a type error, which means that your code can spot it, your tooling can spot it, that, you know, like your static analyzer, your IDE, can spot these errors for you before you even execute your code. You can find bugs before you even run your code. Before you even write tests for it, you can find errors. <clears throat> but note, this affects calls and returns from this file only. This is the, the quirk and, and the trick with strict typing in PHP. This affects calls in this function, excuse me, in this file only. So if we try to return something that's not a string from get zip, then that will fail. If it's an integer that could get converted to a string, it will still fail in strict mode. However, it does not affect the constructor because the constructor is called from elsewhere. It may or may not have been coerced into strings. Inside the constructor, I have strings, guaranteed. But whether or not PHP objects uh, to passing an, in an integer here depends on where it's called. In our setup file where, where we're calling from, if we declare strict mode, that will impact right here. That will catch this error because we have an integer we're ca calling to a string. We're saying PHP on my code be pedantic, not on the code in someone else's file, on my own code only. But it will not affect um, the, you know, the uh, get address or get zip method, actually the, the returns in, in those uh, classes. <clears throat> this is a little weird. It feels odd at first, but once, you, once it clicks, it makes a lot of sense and it's really intuitive. In strict mode, the only casting that happens, the only coercion, is an integer will convert to a float without uh, complaining. Because that's safe to do in the 99.9% .9 case and most languages do that. If you run into a case where you're in strict mode and uh, you, know, you still need to convert something, you can either convert it yourself and, and cast the variable yourself or redesign your code. I'd recommend redesigning your code because if you have a type mismatch, there's a pretty good chance that you're doing something wrong and don't understand your problem space. Good data modeling and good type checking help you understand your, your uh, problem space better. When should you use strict types? I'm gonna argue almost always almost always. The exception is when doing input. Because let's face it, we're on the web, everything comes in as a string. No matter what it is, it comes in to us as a string. So my recommendation, where you're doing input, leave that in weak mode. That passes off to some other part of the system. That gets uh, cast automatically and then you keep everything else in your system in strict mode. This catches the most bugs. <clears throat> uh, that reduces the number of tests you need to write. This really helps you drive good design. It means you have to keep your input op output operations separate in separate files from the rest of your code base, which you should be doing anyway, right? Right. This is also documentation. Who's heard the phrase good code is self-documenting? You don't need uh, documentation for it. You don't need comments. Right. Anyone who says that and is not using strict typing with scalar types is a hypocrite. This is inline documentation that cannot go out of date. Because if it goes out of date, your code will complain at you. PHP will catch this fact for you. This is good documentation. <clears throat> of course, there is one uh, BC warning here. We do have a couple of new reserved words. 
If you have a, a class or a function named int string bool or float uh, that will now break, that's already been fixed in Drupal 8 and in Symfony and most other systems. It's real easy to fix on that. Whew. That's heavy. That's a lot. That's cool. Let's try something a bit lighter, shall we? You've probably written this code at some point in your life. You're doing a sort, you need to provide a, a custom sort function, and because of how sort works, to sort things you return negative one if the first one is less, and zero if they're equal, and one if it's greater than, and I always go to look this up. I can never remember which number I'm supposed to return for what. I really, I can never remember it. And it's long, and it's ugly, and it's stupid, and we don't have to write that anymore. There's a new uh, token in PHP, a new operator in, in PHP 7, called Spaceship. This is actually what it's called in the engine, the, the name of the token, and it looks like this. Because, well, it kind of looks like a spaceship, right? Specifically, a tie interceptor. <laughs> See? It's arrow and arrow and, yeah, right, okay. This is exactly equivalent to that previous slide. A, Spaceship B, which means sort these things and return one, zero, negative one, whichever it's supposed to be, and I don't even have to remember which it is. A comes before B. <clears throat> or, or you compare those. Great. Of course, that's not the most useful example. Most times when you're doing a custom sort function, it's not the degenerate case. I'm doing something more interesting, like uh, comparing two people. I want to sort them by last name and then first name. Seems reasonable, you know, not, not an abnormal thing to do. And this is what you have to do for that in PHP 5. Return negative one here, and one, and L to get nesting, and, and which zero is this, and yuck. That's long. Is there any way we can make this shorter? Well, I guess we could use ternaries. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> no, 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 we can't. But we can do this. Spaceship between two arrays compares the first items and then the last items if, uh, or the next items if those match. So this will do exactly what that last, you know, huge morass of code did. Sort these two objects by last name and then by first name. You want a third pro uh, property in here, like a middle name or whatever? Okay, just put a third value into each array. Done. That's the spaceship operator. Very targeted, very useful in that little narrow place. Number four. <clears throat> You've written code like this at some point, right? Right? Okay. But this is ugly and boring and redundant. So at some point, PHP added, I think it was in 5.4 probably, maybe just 5.3, um, this collapsed short ternary. So it, if the username is a truthy value, use that, else uh, return anonymous. Okay, that's fine. Unless the username variable doesn't actually exist which happens in PHP more often than you think, especially when you're dealing with array keys. Do we deal with array keys? <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Well, <laughs> then you get this error, undefined variable or undefined array key. Who's seen that error at some point this week? <laughs> yep. So the way to check that is you have to check if it's is set and not null Okay, well that's just, again, ugly and long. Fortunately, we now have in PHP 7 null coalesce, which works like this. It's a, a double question mark operator. Uh, it pronounced uh, username equals username what? Anonymous. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the way it's actually pronounced. This is equivalent to that. This will return username if username, the variable is defined and is not null else it'll return the next item. It's also chainable. So you can have layers of default. So <clears throat> we can say you know, the username is going to be uh, the submitted array's username, what? user uh, username, what? anonymous. And then whichever is the first one of these that is defined and not null will get used. But be mindful here, I'm saying not null a false defined value will still pass. So if submitted username here is numeric one, or is, excuse me, is a numeric zero, or is an empty string, that'll still pass and, get you, and be what gets used. 
Number five, cryptography is hard. Really, if you think you understand it, you probably don't, by, kind of by definition. To do modern cryptography well, you need to be dealing with really, really, really big random numbers. Like any crypto people in the room, I apologize for the oversimplification I'm going to give just now. Um, but you need really, really big random numbers. And you need to be able to generate lots of really, really, really big random numbers very quickly. Problem, computers don't actually do things random. That's not actually a thing. So you need something that is sufficiently random in order to do this kind of logic. Now, at this point, you're probably saying, Larry, doesn't PHP already have this kind of solved? I mean, we've got the RAND function, but RAND is not actually random. It's extremely easy to predict what the next random value is, which means if you're using that for, cryptogra for cryptographic purposes, please stop now. There's mCrypt. That's not really safe either. And by the way, the library hasn't maintained in, um, oh dear, since uh, PHP 4 was still a thing, if, if that tells you how long ago it was. Uh, so please don't use that either. You can read straight from dev u random, which will give you operating system provided really random uh, values. Uh, problem, that only works on Linux and Mac and only if the web server has access to that device, which it may or may not, depending on the configuration. So that's not really reliable either. There's the OpenSSL extension, but it's hard to use and not near guaranteed to be enabled. And OpenSSL doesn't exactly have the greatest track record recently on security either, does it? Sigh. What we really want, what we really, really want, okay, is cryptographically secure pseudo random number generator, or more, more properly pronounced, C spring. Some people will tell you it's C spring, but I don't see an I there. C spring. So, do we have a C spring in PHP? Well, we do in PHP 7. You want a series of cryptographically secure random bytes? Okay, call the random bytes function. You get back 16 random bytes. Not characters, 16 random bytes of garbage. Don't print it to the screen, it may not do what you expect. You want a random integer? Okay, yeah, uh, let's get a random integer between one and 100 inclusive. D done, and it works, and it's easy, and it's secure, and it's safe, <clears throat> and huzzah. If for some reason your underlying engine and operating system have no way to give you valid, safe, random values, it will throw an error, uh, er, uh, excuse me, throw an exception. Why? Because if it didn't and it just returned false, as so many functions in PHP do, well, then you'd get false, which casts to zero when you try to use it as a number, or to empty string when you try to use it as a string, and then you're using zero or empty string as your random key value for everything, and oh boy, is that not secure. <laughs> so yeah, if it can't actually be done securely safely, bail out because you don't want to continue. Bad idea. If you're on PHP 7, use these. If you're on PHP 5, there is a backport library available that, I don't know, did we get that to 8.1, Angie? I, I don't recall. There is an issue to swap out uh, Drupal's random number generator with this backward compatibility library that's been built by the same people who did the implementation for PHP 7, so it's reasonably trustworthy. Um, but just like you know, password hash, you can use it, and it just takes care of that problem for you, and then when you upgrade to PHP 7, it just uses the native versions. So side note, minor rant here. If you're d doing anything with security, and you're not using this set of functions for password handling and for random value generation, say it with me now, Please stop, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing anything in modern PHP, this is the correct way to do uh, secure random number generation and secure par password hashing. Do not, under any circumstances, try and write your own encryption system. For the love of God, don't try to write your own encryption system. And of course, BC warning here, uh, we do now have two new functions. If you already had a function in your code base named that, well, it just broke. Um, but if it wasn't already doing the same thing anyway, I don't know why you called it that, so no big deal. Number six. You know what else is hard? Testing. Specifically, writing mocks. This is writing mocks with PHP unit. This class under test down here 
is what I actually want to be testing. In order to get to the point where I can test that, I need to create a mock builder, disable a constructor, then get a mock. What's the difference between the mock builder and the mock? I'm not actually sure. Um, then I, I can create a straight value object on its own, that's fine. Uh, but I also need a mock builder, all the same boilerplate for this other class, and then I've got this domain-specific language for slowly writing out how this code should behave and this metal language for defining how code should run. Um, and then I need to use this will return value map, and I, this structure of this array does not make the slightest bit of sense to me at all. I do not comprehend this. I copy this out of the PHP unit documentation. I still don't quite get it. And finally, I can assert true on something. Yuck. What we really want is just a custom class that we can use for testing purposes only that I can just write code for and not have to write this code that defines code nonsense and <clears throat> you know, just use that for my test. But I don't want to have to have another class and hit the autoloader and it be in another file. I just want it right there, just like the mock is. What we want are anonymous fakes. PHP 7 gives you the ability to define anonymous classes for which I have no use cases other than testing. But for testing, they're kind of nice. These are classes that are used once. In this case, <clears throat> uh, we're going to create a new class that extends the thing we're mocking, override the constructor to disable it, which is, this is much easier to read, and then that uh, load method, okay, forget this map stuff, I can just do you know, whatever. I can write actual code to return what I want to actually return in these cases. And I can even return new anonymous classes if for some reason that I need to do that. I can nest them. <clears throat> this is much easier to follow, much easier to read, much easier to maintain than this weird you know, mocking meta layer stuff. There are still use cases for that, but for a lot of cases, just switching to anonymous class is going to be a lot less effort. <clears throat> uh, Anonymous classes can do pretty much anything a class can do, except be serialized. Anonymous classes cannot be serialized. Anything else, yeah, they can do it. You could have a new class that implements uh, a logger interface, and just pass it in directly. The service requires a logger, okay, we'll give it a debugging logger, right there. And it accepts traits, too. Just like a class, any nor normal named class does. We can have a constructor, and you can call a constructor. Pass a, a logger interface object to it, it takes it and just does whatever it's going to do. <clears throat> As with anonymous functions, you can write some extremely impossible to read code this way, please don't, but when used judiciously, they can make your code a lot cleaner, a lot simpler, a lot easier to read, especially in tests. If you have a use case for them outside of testing, please let me know, I'd actually love to find a use case for them, but at the moment, testing is the main, uh, the main use case. What else is on the list of things that suck? Fatal errors. Those suck, don't they? Now, PHP has two kinds of fatal errors. It has actually fatal, and it has things that are called recoverable errors. Except you can't actually recover from them. This is helpful. The problem with recoverable errors is that there's really very little cleanup you can do. You get a single unified uh, callback that gets called with no context um, that doesn't let you actually recover. You can't you know, figure out your system unless you're doing everything globally, which you're not, right? Right. It also means that if you have a finally block and a try catch finally, that doesn't get called. Uh, if you have a destructor on an object, that's not gonna get called properly. You can't do any real cleanup. Suppose you have code like this. So you have this uh, do stuff function. It takes a request object and we pass it a user object. A mm -hmm. user is not a request. I'm sure there's a, an insult in there somewhere, but. <clears throat> um, and so this should die. It gives you a catchable fatal error. Catchable fatal error, but I can't catch it. So why is it called a catchable fatal error? And if it's fatal, why do I have a chance to catch it? This does not make any sense at all. Which is why in PHP 7, there's something you can catch called a type error, which gets thrown. 
stick that in a catch block, and do whatever cleanup makes sense in your use case. <clears throat> Include you know, some PHP code that is buggy and has a parse error in it. Instead of PHP just bombing on you, you can catch a parse error. Why is this useful? Let's say you're including a module file. Do you want your entire site to bomb, or do you want to just you know, be able to clean up and show the user a helpful error message instead of, oh crap, the entire site just exploded because someone forgot a semicolon in a module that I downloaded off GitHub? Take your pick, which one you want there. Call a function that doesn't exist. You get an error thrown. PHP 7 includes a new hierarchy of throwable things. Exception now implements an interface called throwable that is built into the engine. <coughs> um, that's, it basically inherits everything that exception used to have on it, now moved to throwable. Exceptions work as they always have, but now they have a sibling called error. And we saw uh, some, some of these. Uh, there's assertion error, parse error, type error, arithmetic error, uh, a couple of others. Things that used to be recoverable errors or parse errors are now thrown objects. These are used for uh, cases <clears throat> where the code is wrong. You can catch them just like you would uh, an exception, but they're for cases where the code is wrong. Not the user, not the environment, the code is wrong. Exceptions you, you use when the user screwed up. Errors you use when the coder screwed up. That's the general guideline. You probably will not catch uh, errors locally. The, the real use case for them is something like Drupal having a global error uh, handler rather than exception handler, so that if you, know, you have a type error or a module is buggy or whatever, Drupal can catch that or whatever your framework is can catch that and say, oh, there is this problem, I will log it like a, a, a good piece of code so that we can debug it later, and I'll show a nice message to the user saying that such and such broke and we'll report it to the administrator and it, it's okay, rather than just saying, fatal error, whatever, no, bad. These are, most of these cases you couldn't continue anyway with your code, it's a matter of you know, cleaning up nicely <coughs> uh, after yourself. Again, backward compatibility warning here. It's a couple of new class names that are reserved. If you had an exception named those already or a class named those already, uh, those will now break. Um, your odds of that are again pretty low. Um, there's also the global exception handler. In PHP 5, you probably did this a lot. You set an exception handler uh, globally so that this is basically like dropping a, a try catch around your entire script and then whatever your function is gets called. Yeah, this is your, you know, your catch block, essentially. And you can type into it on an exception, because it'll catch anything. Uh, problem, in PHP 7, it could also get an error at that point. It's caught by the same function. So you have to type in on throwable, which is the parent of both error and exception. Uh, of course, that breaks on PHP 5, because there is no such thing as throwable. So, yeah, just don't type into it. This is what we did for Drupal 8, um, sorry, whatever. Oh, let's see, what else sucks that we can fix? Assertions. Assurs assertions kind of suck. Assertions work like this. Who's actually used assertions in PHP? Wow, that's more than I expected. Very few people use assertions in PHP because they don't work right. Um, the basic idea is you have this function assert, and that asserts that this statement is true, and if it's not true, you die with this additional error message. This is for uh, most useful case is like extended type checking for things that you can't do with just the normal type system itself. Like in this case, this definition array has to have these keys defined on it. If it doesn't, the coder screwed up, so we'll just die right here. Uh, problem, assert is a function, and you can turn it off in production. That's the idea. So that this happens only in development on production. You turn it off, turn assertions off, and then you don't get those error messages there because presumably you fixed them all in code by, by then. But assert is a function, which means that the body of the assert that those is set checks always run, which is slow, but then you're not doing anything with them. Uh, so the alternative that you're expected to do is pass in a string that will get evaled. It was right. Yeah. Um, like I said, assertions kind of suck. So in PHP 7, 
we have this thing called expectations. Why are they called expectations? I have no idea. What they really mean is assertions don't suck. So now we can turn on assertions uh, with these two any sets. And then we can have our own errors that extend from assert error, which is one of those errors we just talked about. And now assert is no longer a function, it's a language construct, which means when it's enabled, this will do what we'd expect. If this is true, good. If it's not, throw this error, which we can catch and report and say, oh, by the way, developer, you screwed up, go fix it. In production, we turn assertions off. This entire line disappears from the code base. So it does not matter how expensive that check is, it doesn't happen in production. <clears throat> Basically, assertions actually work now. Drupal 8 actually does use assertions in a few places. We added support for uh, assertions, which mainly means we have a shim that makes them look uh, more like the PHP 7 version. You still need to put them in uh, quotes so that they, um, they get evaled. And there's a couple of nice utilities uh, in, in the system for asserting that array, certain array keys exist or that something is an associative array or something is a numeric array and stuff like that. <clears throat> Number nine, who's worked with iterators in PHP? Far too few hands are up right now. Iterators are fun, but the old way of doing iterators was hard. Let's say you want to you know, take two different data sets and run through them as if they're a single data set. Okay, we, let's use iterators. Oh dear. We have this class, we're gonna pull data from a remote data source. So we create a new, whole new class that implements iterator keep track of three properties, implement one, two, three, four, five, six methods, um, some of which don't make any conceptual sense. And yes, this is not the right way. You, you'd want to do this as a single call and cache it, but I wanted it to fit on a slide. Um, and so we've got all this bookkeeping we have to do ourselves in order to um, iterate over this data set nicely. We can also get a, an iterable object back from our database layer because we use PDO and PDO results are iterables. And then we can create this append iterator and pass both of those to it with this append call and now we can for each over them all as one big thing. And that's yuck. Nice capability, way too much code. Since PHP 5.5, which means every supported version of PHP that exists, you can now use generators. Generators are, uh, work like this. When if a function has a yield instead of a return statement, when execution hits that yield, that gets returned as if you were calling next on an iterator. The next time you try to iterate it, it picks up where it left off and continues. So when you stick this function or the result of calling this function into a for each loop, it will run through, return, yield that value to the loop, next time through, pick up where it left off, keep going, hit the next yield, and so on. I could give an entire talk just on uh, generators, I'm not going to, there are people who do. But this lets us take those two slides worth of code and reduce it to just these two functions. That's in PHP 5.5. If you're not already doing that, please start. What's new in PHP 7 is we can now yield from another iterator. So this uh, get values function does the equivalent of the append iterator, but it's a lot easier to read. It's a lot less code, and it does exactly what we'd expect: yield all the stuff out of that first iterator, then yield all the stuff out of the next iterator. You can also now return from a generator. So when the iterator is done, there's still a value at the end. Your odds of using that yourself are pretty small. I'll be honest. Both of these capabilities were added primarily to support coroutines. What are coroutines? Again, that's a whole talk on its own. Uh, short version, coroutines are a way to use this kind of stuff to write Node.js in PHP. If that sounds cool, uh, correction, Node.js in PHP only better. If that sounds cool, look up something called icicle.io. It's a PHP library that's using this kind of technique. <clears throat> and uh, this this kind of capability makes that better. And finally, number 10, uh, quick pop, pop quiz. What does this code do? Um, 
Variable, variable. So what happens here? I don't know. Is this the bar key of the foo variable, which is then dereferenced to get the name of a, a string, which is an array that we then get baz off of? Uh, I don't know. How about that one? Um, um, uh, oh, now you're just messing with me. I, I don't know. I'd have to actually look it up and see what, act, what happens for these. Actually, I have it written down in my notes because I'd never have figured it out otherwise. In PHP 7, that has been cleaned up. The variable syntax is now uniform, by which I mean it's always read left to right. This was not actually done for usability. This was done to make the engine uh, smoother and cleaner. But as a nice side effect, it makes it a lot easier to read the code, too. Everything now reads left to right. So in this first case, what happens? We have foo. We treat that as a, a callable and call that. The result from that is an array. We dereference bar off of that. And that's a, itself a callable, and we then call that. I, I would never actually write code like this. But if I run against someone who does, I can just look at it and pretty easily tell what's happening and what's actually going to run in what order. The second one, I've got an array literal, which I can then read the first, uh, the zeroth item off of and access a property read off of that. Again, probably shouldn't write code like this, but if someone does, it's very obvious what's going on. All of these examples, it's pretty self-evident. You can just look at them and see, read left to right to see what happens. Which enables some really interesting things. Like you can wrap any expression in parentheses and then dereference it as an array or as an object or call it literally. Which means you can do something like this and have a function you define literally and then call immediately, just like in JavaScript. OK, maybe that's not the best example. <laughs> but you can, and it works. More importantly, you can now, uh, if you have a, a callable on that is a property of an object, throw parentheses around it, and you can call it directly without assigning to a temporary variable. Everything just becomes more logical. And, more, and easier to predict, <clears throat> both for you and for the engine. Of course, one BC warning here. This means that all those complex cases we just looked at a moment ago, what they actually mean um, changes, depending on which PHP version you're in. Solution to that, um, don't. Or you know, wrap stuff in parentheses or sometimes curly braces, uh, and it will force an order of operation. You can still do that in PHP 7 if you really want something to evaluate differently. But at that point, what are you doing? So that's it. That's the top 10 features in PHP 7, as far as I'm concerned. But um, this is PHP 7, and we're not done yet. PHP 7 is fast. Really, really fast. How fast is fast? Faster than a cheetah trying to imitate a kangaroo, which is a line I use just because of that picture. Why? How did PHP 7 go so much faster? Well, the reasons are pretty nerdy. I'm not going to go into them in detail. Uh, long story short, the, uh, the PHP engine itself is written in C, and the people writing that engine rewrote most of it to be way faster in ways that make sense for writing fast C code. That has nothing to do with the PHP code. The APIs for PHP code barely change at all. But the APIs for writing uh, C extensions for PHP changed dramatically because they're now crazy fast. <clears throat> so I, I'm not going to go into all those details. Just suffice to say, well, let's ask Rasmus, founder of PHP. He ran some benchmarks last fall. Uh, this is Drupal 8 as of, I think, October. So this is uh, a couple months old now. Uh, in terms of requests per second, so higher is better. Um, 4.4, 5.4, 5.5, and 5.6, pretty consistent. PHP 7, I like this. HHVM, still an improvement, but not as much. Okay, so that's what we got here with 2,000, 2,500 requests per second. That's pretty good. WordPress, very similar, you know, tootling along on PHP 5. In this case, faster on HHVM than on PHP 7. Uh, also, we just saw 2,500 requests a second for Drupal 8. Here's WordPress 4.1 at 6.04. Booyah. 
PHPBB, very similar, very similar story. story. Okay, 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 okay. In this case, in this case much, better much better than HHVM on, uh, with PHP 7. MediaWiki, Media same, same pattern. In this case, HHVM has a clear edge. But still, but still both, are both are faster. Basically, Basically every time I see uh, Zen put out, put out a benchmark, it proves that PHP 7 is faster than HHVM. And every time Facebook puts out a benchmark, it proves that HHVM is faster than PHP 7. But what both of them agree on is they're both way faster than 5.5 or 5.6 by 50% faster. If you have a CPU-bound application where most of your work is in PHP, you can see 50% improvement and performance, and performance just, by just by switching to PHP 7. There are companies that have done a switch to PHP 7 with very, very large code bases. And, and the memory, the memory savings, savings and the CPU, and the CPU savings, they've been able to turn off half, half of their server cluster just, just by switching to PHP 7. If you take, if you take nothing, nothing else away from this talk, talk PHP, 7 PHP 7 is the number one performance improvement you can make, you can make on your site today. But some of you, some of you are probably scared, scared because, because it's 7.0 7 7 and I don't trust 0.0 releases of anything. And historically that's a fair statement to make, let's be honest. But not, this but not this time. Drupal 8, Drupal 8 Symphony, Symphony, Zen, Zen Laravel, Yi, Magento, Magento, Slim, 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 WordPress, WordPress K, Doctrine, Doctrine PHP, PHP, PHP Meidman, and probably, and probably a bunch of other code find logos for are already, already fully, fully tested, tested and, and are fully tested, fully tested pass, pass under PHP, under PHP 7. 7. Uh, uh, this, this, this is what the automated testing, testing does for you. PHP 7 was the best test, test of PHP, PHP in history, history because, because all of these all projects are testing their code base, all of their, their weird edge cases, cases on, the on 7, 7 for, six for 6 months. In fact, in fact uh, PHP 7 was supposed to come out, come out uh, in, um, in, in November. In November. It came out in December. Came out in December. Why? Why? Because of the last minute, minute Drupal, Drupal, with our testing, our testing found bugs in the memory, memory handling, handling of, of PHP 7. 7. Because, because we are the regression test for a way of bringing PHP. PHP. <laughs> I'm not actually making that up. That it was in the array handling. Array handling. And so, so they, they you know, found that, found fixed that, that, fixed that, that bug, and, and, and sat on the for weeks to make sure okay, they didn't break anything else. So, so <coughs> now, PHP 7 is the most tested, most battle-hard 0.0 release of PHP ever. Drupal 8, the Drupal CI structure running on Drupal.org can test everything with PHP 7. Drupal 8 core does pass its entire test suite with PHP 7 and has for months, as does as do almost all Drupal 8 modules. If they don't, well, go fix that module. What about the hosts? Do we have to wait for the hosts to catch up? Funny you should mention it. PHP version.info. It's a community-run site that accepts pull requests for tracking what hosts are offering what version of PHP. As of this past weekend, when I last checked, there were 34 hosts listed there that were offering PHP 7 now. And that number is only count going up. The last time I looked at it before this talk was 20-some-odd. Uh, so that number is growing. You can pick any of these. And uh, commercial, yes, Platform SH is a PHP 7-ready host. It's one line in a config file. So if you want to run Drupal 8 under PHP 7, you can do that today. And that is PHP 7 in a nutshell. It's ready, it's awesome, it's fast. Use it now, it is the correct way to run Drupal 8. Thank you. We have a couple of uh, minutes left, so we've got a microphone right here for questions. Come on up. See someone coming. <clears throat> Is that there's, there's a switch at the side, I think. Or just shout it out, I'll repeat it. <laughs> Give it a second. I just just, just shout it. Where are we at with uh, Drupal 7? Drupal 7 and PHP 7. Um, we're at what, like 98% test passage. There's a few weird things in the session handling. Um, it might run anyway. I haven't tried it. Uh, but that's getting very close. And that is something people are working on. And uh, we want that to work. And it will soon. 
if you've got a site now, you're using continuous integration for your testing, which I hope you are, Travis, Circle CI, whatever your CI system is, add one or two lines to a config file and you can test your own site under PHP 7 as well and make sure everything works there. So very, very close, we'll get fixed soon. If you declare uh, strict types in a file, are you required to actually declare types? No, you're not. What that affects is if you make a function call from that file and the function you're calling has a type specified, PHP should be extra picky about that call. If you're returning a value and you have specified a return type, then PHP should be picky about that return. But you can move, put your code into strict mode, specify no types yourself, and it will only affect the calls you make to other code that is typed. So it, everything is completely opt-in. I just recommend opting in everywhere. <laughs> Global configuration for strict types. No, there is not, because that means code will behave differently depending on an any setting. And PHP has learned the hard way that is an absolutely atrocious idea. The idea here, you can have a third-party library you pull in that is using strict types internally. I don't want to use strict types for whatever reason. So my code I leave in loose mode. That code can still be in strict mode and still do all of its strict checking it wants. And I can ignore that fact in my own code because if it's in strict mode in, in that file, I'm not, I call that function, that function call is still weak mode. So I am unaffected by it. So that, that's why it can't be a global setting. Uh, the question is, is PHP going to adopt function overloading uh, now that we have the strict types? I, from, from what I see on the PHP internals mailing list, I highly doubt uh, straight function overloading is going to happen anytime soon. There is discussion of union types, which may or may not happen. That's uh, still up in the air. Uh, there's discussion of adding the, the ability to opt in something to being nullable uh, as either a return or a uh, parameter that is going to vote soon, I think. Um, but yeah, function overloading I don't see happening in the near future, just based on the zeitgeist of what people are saying and how the engine works. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the question is about uh, a, a JIT just in time compiler. So Zend actually was starting to work on a JIT for uh, PHP and realized they couldn't. It just, by the time you made it work, it didn't give you any benefit. <clears throat> uh, and they solved that problem by rewriting the engine and calling that PHP 7. Uh, there is talk of adding a JIT at some point. Whether or not it's even valuable anymore with the speed improvements in PHP 7 is debatable. Um, I don't know. It may or may not be useful. Frankly, at this point, there are other optimizations to make that are more valuable, I would say. So maybe, but it's a different architecture, different runtime setup, so uh, not a priority. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, so the commenter saying he has a Drupal 7 site on PHP 7 and the only error is somewhere in the GD image handling. Uh, and beyond that, everything's working fine. So as I said, it's not perfect, but Drupal 7 and PHP 7 are really, really close. Uh, I've never tried doing an Ubuntu 12 to 16 update, or a, a 1204 to 1604 update. Uh, my update, f I just recently upgraded my own system from 1510 to 1604 and it went very smoothly. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I do know a lot of the package names changed uh, between uh, Ubuntu versions, so you may be caught by that. I'd say Google around for it, uh, or these days, if it's a VM, just build a new VM. They're cheap. Uh, if it's a production server, move to a container-based system, and then that becomes trivially easy. I happen to work for a container-based company, so I, I get to say that. <laughs> You're, yeah, there's a 1604, okay. So yeah, Drupal 7 on Ubuntu 1604. Uh, yeah, Ubuntu 1604, which was just released, the new LTS, ships with PHP 7 out of the box. So if you want a, a nice, stable uh, PHP 7 distro that's LTS stable, the new Ubuntu is. Anyone else? As someone who knows nothing about PHP, is 7 a good place to start? Yes. <laughs> Most of the system is the same. We added, or I shouldn't say we, I didn't work on it directly, but the internals team added a lot of new capabilities, a lot of new features, um, but the basic language is still the same. So aside from the stuff I just talked about pretty much, everything else you do in PHP is going to be the same between 5 and 7. That said, PHP 7 hosts are not impossible to come by. There's a couple dozen of them already. It, the language is much better and will also have uh, security support for longer. So I go ahead and start there and I think I'm getting told I need to stop talking. So thank you everyone for coming. Enjoy the rest of the conference.